Hello, everybody. Welcome to Worship Today at Trinity Lutheran Church in Litchfield Park, Arizona. We're glad that you're with us. Today, we're continuing to celebrate the 50th anniversary of our congregation. It's such a joy to be part of a church, a congregation, that has been in existence for five decades and that they are continuing to proclaim God's word. And we pray that we will continue to proclaim the word of God um, for decades more to come. Today, as we celebrate and we remember God's goodness and grace to us, that he has brought us to this congregation to for us and our families to, to grow and learn, we're going to remember how St. Paul talks about the church, that the Holy Christian Church has a unity around one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. We're going to think through that idea. We're going to see what those things mean and how we as individuals fit into the picture. You are part of the church. You are part of the body of Christ. And that is significant. We're glad you're with us today as we celebrate God's goodness and grace to us as a congregation, as we gather around his word and his son Jesus to worship and celebrate. We'll see you in worship in just a minute. Hello, everybody. Welcome to worship today. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sins. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death 
of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first scripture lesson for today is from Isaiah chapter 49, beginning at the fifth verse. And now says the Lord, he who formed me in the womb to be a servant, to bring Jacob back to him and gather Israel to himself. For I am honored in the eyes of the Lord and my God has been my strength. He says, is it too small a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and bring back those of Israel I have kept? I will also make you a light to the Gentiles that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. This is what the Lord says, the Redeemer and Holy One of Israel, to him who was despised and abhorred by the nations, to the servant of rulers. Kings will see you and stand up. Princes will see and bow down because of the Lord who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel who has chosen you. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 4, the first six verses. As a prisoner of the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is over all and through all and in all. Our third scripture lesson today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning at the 12th verse. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we are all baptized in one body, Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, and all were made to drink one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. And if the, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would make it not any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? And so as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, just as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those parts of the body that we think less honorable we bestow greater honor, and our unpresentable parts are treated with great modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Our gospel lesson for today comes from Matthew chapter 16, beginning at the 13th verse. Now, when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? And they said, 
Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. This is the word of our God. We continue now by confessing our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Church is one foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord she is his new creation by water and the word from heaven he came and saw her to be his holy bride and with his blood he Yet she on earth has union with 
Well, this year we have that joy of celebrating 50 years as a congregation here at Trinity. And it all started as a mission congregation of St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Eight and a half miles down Indian School Road to the east of us is where St. Paul's Lutheran Church is. It still is there today. 50 years ago, the road was not fully paved. And there were a group of people who attended St. Paul's, but they lived here in the Litchfield Park area and they wanted to plant a church out here. So in 1968, they wrote to the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod asking for help, but they were told that it would be too costly to plant a church in Litchfield Park and that the growth in the area did not warrant a new congregation. But the people persisted. And in 1974, Village Lutheran Church was established. That was the name of this congregation at, at the beginning. But soon, a few years later, it was officially changed to Trinity Lutheran Church. And we became members of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Because of their work 50 years ago, we have a place today for us and our family to worship the Lord, to grow in faith, and to serve other people. The church is an important place. It's not just another building along the side of a road. It's a place where the people of God gather together. In fact, the church is made up with of people. A good definition of the church would be all believers of all times and of all places. It's every single person who believes and confesses, like Peter, that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. The Greek word for church that's used in the New Testament means the called out ones. Through faith in Christ, God has called you out of this sinful world and he has brought you in to his kingdom, which is called the church. Frequently in scripture, sin and unbelief are pictured as being lost and trapped in the dark and corrupt world around us. We have no way out. Before God created faith within you, we were lost. We were in a terrible relationship with God. Sin had created a hostility between us and God. So much so that your heart, your mind, your will was totally self-centered and self-absorbed. You neither loved God nor did you love your neighbor. A life without Christ is pictured as empty and, and foolish. There is no peace, no life, no hope, no purpose without Christ. In sin, before faith, you were lost and trapped in the dark and corrupt world. And the only thing that laid in front of you was death and eternal condemnation. But by God's grace and mercy and his love for you, he intervened in your life. Here's how St. Paul describes it in the book of Colossians. 
He rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of his son, whom he loves, in whom we have redemption, that is the forgiveness of our sins. That kingdom of the son whom he loves, we usually call that the Holy Christian Church. Through faith in Christ, God intervened in your life and he rescued you from certain death and eternal condemnation. You now belong to the Lord. God has called you through his word to be his very own. For most of us, that happened in our baptism, when God, the Holy Spirit, works through the water and the word to create faith and bring us into the kingdom. If you came to faith later in life, your calling came as the Spirit worked through the word of God first, and then you were baptized later. But either way, God has intervened in your life because he loves you. God has rescued you from this sinful and dark world, and he has brought you into his kingdom, the kingdom of his son, whom he loves. He has brought you into the Holy Christian Church. Through faith in Christ, you have brought, been brought into an assembly of other believers in Christ. In the Holy Christian Church, we gather around the holy things that create our faith and strengthen our faith. Those holy things are God's word and his sacraments, holy scripture, holy baptism, and holy communion. Those are the ways that God works in our lives to keep our faith strong and healthy and growing. And so the people of God gather together around these holy things to grow in faith, to worship the Lord, and to serve other people. That small group of people 50 years ago, they knew the importance of the church. And they wanted a local congregation where they and their families could gather together around the holy things to worship the Lord to grow in faith, and to serve other people. Trinity Lutheran Church remains a place where God's people gather around his word and his sacraments, the holy things, to worship him, to grow in faith, and to serve other people. And as we do, as we gather together, there is a bond among believers. We all look to the same Savior. We all trust in the same Father in heaven. We all hold to the teachings of Holy Scripture. Specifically for us, we are conservative Lutheran Christians, and we hold to Scripture alone, grace alone, faith alone, and Christ alone alone. There is a unity among us as we hold to the truth of God's holy word. Here's how St. Paul describes that unity in Ephesians chapter 4. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. St. Paul lists seven points that unite us as a congregation, seven gifts that create a bond among us as God's people and a local congregation. The one body refers to the body of Christ. 
It's a common description for the Holy Christian Church in the New Testament. We heard it today in our First Corinthians scripture lesson. Christ is the head of the body. His people are the members of his body. Just as our human bodies are one and work together with many parts, so too Christ's body is one and it works together with many parts. Every part of the body is important and useful and helpful. You are a part of the body of Christ here at Trinity. You are gifted by the Holy Spirit for work in his church. You are important and useful and helpful as you work in our congregation. Not only did St. Paul say there's one body, but he said there's one spirit. And of course, this would be the Holy Spirit, the one who has called us to faith, the one who works through the word and the sacraments, the holy things, the one who continues to work to sustain our faith throughout our lives. For 50 years, the Holy Spirit has guided and led this congregation, and he continues to do so today. And we pray that he will always do so. That same Holy Spirit has brought you into this congregation for you and your family to worship the Lord, to grow in faith, to serve other people. One body, one spirit, one hope, St. Paul says. The hope that we share is the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. We are all journeying to the same place, to the kingdom of heaven. We will all live together in that perfect kingdom of heaven where there will be no sin, no strife, no discord, no effects of sin and its destruction. In heaven, there will be complete unity and perfect peace as we join with all believers of all times and in all places, including our loved ones who have died in the faith. We have one hope, the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting. Right in the middle of this list that St. Paul um, gives us of seven things, right in the middle is the one Lord who is, of course, Jesus Christ, our Savior. He is our Lord and our God. He is the one who has done the work of salvation for us. He has forgiven us all of our sins through his death and resurrection. In fact, his cross and his resurrection creates a peace and a unity that we share as a congregation in the Holy Christian Church. His cross and his resurrection is what drives us to reach out to our neighbors and to support mission work around the world. The center of everything in the Holy Christian Church is the one Lord, Jesus, and what he has done for us. His life, his death, and his resurrection that leads us to repentance and the forgiveness of all of our sins. Our one Lord is not only the, the center of this list of seven gifts, but he is the center of everything in the Holy Christian Church. He is the center of our congregation here at Trinity, and he is the center of our individual lives as believers. St. Paul goes on to say that, that one of the things that unites us is the one faith. When he talks about the one faith, he's not talking about your personal faith. He's talking about the Christian faith, the body of doctrine, the truths of Holy Scripture. The truth of Holy Scripture, the Christian faith, unites us as a congregation in the Holy Christian Church. That's why we strive to become more and more biblically literate and doctrinally sound because we are lifelong students of the one faith, the Christian faith, the, the doctrines and truths of Holy Scripture. Paul mentions 
one baptism where the place that Christ claims you as his own, where you are publicly identified as one of the elect of God, where you are brought into the kingdom of God. God has brought you into his family in the one baptism. He gave you his name. He gave you gifts to use in his church to serve other people. Baptism is important. If you or your family have not been baptized, then let's talk because baptism is significant and it is important. It's one of the gifts that God has placed in his holy Christian church. Finally, St. Paul reminds us that we all share one God and Father of us all. That certainly reminds us that we're all part of God's family, that we're brothers and sisters in Christ, that we can boldly approach our Father and look to him for all good things and turn to him in times of trouble. One of the things that unites us is God our Father, the one God and Father of all, who is in all and through all. You can see by, by this list that St. Paul has given us that the Holy Christian Church is important. It's not just another building along the side of the road. You don't find these things anywhere else. In the church, you will find one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all. You're not going to find those things anywhere else in the world. These are the things that unite us as a Christian congregation. These are the things that define the Holy Christian Church. These are the gifts that God gives to his people, including you. These are the things that make the Holy Christian Church so unique, so special, and so very, very important. Fifty years ago, a small group of people worked really, really hard to get this church up and going and off the ground. Over those 50 years, this congregation has seen some tremendous highs and it has endured some terrible lows. But through it all, God has worked for the good of his people. He is the Lord of the church and by his grace and mercy, every single one of us have been called out of the darkness of our sin and into the kingdom of the Son of God. You have been called into the Holy Christian Church. Amen. We pray. Holy Trinity, we praise and thank you for calling us out of our sin and bringing us into the Holy Christian Church. We thank you for providing a local congregation for us so that we may worship you, grow in faith, and serve others. As we celebrate 50 years of your goodness to this congregation, we ask that you continue to allow us to proclaim the gospel so that many people will come to know and believe in you and your son, Jesus. Help us to always treasure and hold fast to the one body, the one spirit, the one hope, the one Lord, the one faith, the one baptism, and the one God and Father of us all. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who is the head of the church. Amen. And now we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Have a great week. We'll see you next week in worship. Joy surrounds this holy place For our sins are washed away By the blood of God's own Son Jesus Christ, the Chosen One If Christ has set us free Then we are free indeed To worship Him with joy in this holy place Love unites this holy place As we seek the Savior's face Hearts are gathered here as one Sinners saved by God's own Son The Lord is present here His love is what we share And everyone is welcome In this holy place As we leave this holy place Filled with God's abundant grace May the gentle spirit of Jesus' sacrificial love Be manifest anew In all we say Stand